Are all feelings truth? We could discuss that in this episode of Kingdom Walk. My name is Roger Grimes. I'm grateful to bring you this word today. But let us pray real fast here before we get into this. Father God, I say thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us this day, O oh God. Father God, I ask you to bless those who are watching this video, O oh Lord. Lord, Father God, I ask you to soften the hearts of those, O oh Father God, that are just feeling some kind of way. They might be distraught, they might be fearful of something, they just may be angry, O oh Lord. But Lord, Father God, I ask you to speak unto them, O oh God. And thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we spent our life going through a roller coaster of emotions. We could be going through highs and lows, back to highs again. We all do it. We have those feelings we could have all the way through that whole roller coaster ride. But are those feelings always truth? They may be real, but are they truth? So you might feel slighted, but no one was treating you that way. You just took it that way. Is, let me say, it's our perception on how we receive things a lot of times. That is where a lot of times our feelings get hurt is because our perception may be wrong. Or it may be true. It may be true that someone's attacking you and made you feel that way. But there's a scripture that I love. It's, a, it's from 2 Timothy 1.7. The Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy. But he said, For God has given or has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. This is from the New King James Version. He has not given us a or spirit of fear. God hasn't given us that. When you are a believer of God, the Holy Spirit comes inside you. You have the Spirit of God living in you. So God has not given us a spirit of fear. He hasn't given us a spirit of anxiety. He's given us a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. In some versions... Say, not sound mind, but it says self control. So we have some form of self control in us, don't we? Because we have the Holy Spirit that can help guide us. But we do have ourselves that gets in the way. We have our mind, our body, and our spirit. And our mind gets in the way. But are all feelings truth? No. No, they're not all truth. I have some notes here from a few years ago I shared this. I'm going to read this for you here. Like I said, we spend our life going through a roller coaster of feelings. Just because we feel some kind of way doesn't mean it is based on truth. You may wonder where I am going with this. Let me tell you. Some may feel alone. But God is there for them. Some may feel anger over a misunderstanding that was never meant to hurt. Some people feel like there is no God because they are hurt by another person. Just because you don't feel or see that God exists doesn't make it truth. Feelings are based on your perception of what you believe. Whether it's truth or not. That was something I shared in a text a few years ago. But that is just a perception on how we see things. We could change the way we see the world if we change our perception on the world. If we change our perception from ourselves and the way the world is into the way God wants us to treat others, God always tells us. To love your neighbor as yourself. The commandment, the greatest commandment of these are love. You see it over and over and over again. But when we feel some kind of way, it's hard to do that. But just remember, 
You have the Spirit of God in you if you are a believer. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound, or of power and love and a sound mind. Now, if you are not a believer, but some of the words I've said, compiled with other things people have said, that would be a calling of the Holy Spirit, where you feel like you're getting closer. You're not there yet, maybe, but you're getting closer to knowing Christ. But maybe the fear is back, you know, pushing you away. Maybe this was the word that you needed to push you towards Christ. If that is you at this moment, you want to come to Christ. The Bible talks about if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God, or that Christ is Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So here's the thing is, you can do this prayer, you can say you're saved, I can say you're saved, but the truth is, only God knows your heart. If you do a prayer and you believe in your heart, truthfully, you cannot help but to confess that Jesus is Lord. But you can confess Jesus is Lord, but not believe it in your heart. So you cannot be half saved. But if this is you and you truly believe that you're being called, the Holy Spirit is wooing you right now. Say this prayer with me. Father God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. Father God, let me repent right now and turn away from my sins. And Father God, I believe that Jesus is Lord of my life and my Savior. Father God, I ask you, please, let your Son come into my heart right now, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come save me right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you truly meant that and you said that prayer, confess it to the Lord. Don't just stop there. Start praying right now, right where you're at. Start praying, forgive for forgiveness of your sins. God is good. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He is good. Just because you feel some kind of way doesn't mean he's not good. Just because bad things happen in this world does not mean that God is not good. See, some people preach the prosperity of the Bible only. But the truth is, if you don't have salvation, prosperity means nothing. Now, what is true salvation? Like I said, coming to God. Truly coming to God. Just loving Him where you are and He will change you. 